Let's make some bad decisions. There are creators and seamstresses that really take their time on projects. And then there are creators who come up with a great idea that sounds wonderful at the time, but are almost always guaranteed to regret their decision as it unfolds into chaos and calamity. I'll give you one guess as to which one is me. For as long as I can remember, I've had this morbid fascination with the Titanic, which is a bit of a paradox because I have uh, a general case of submechanophobia. Anything man-made underneath a decent amount of water. I, <laughs> we were watching an exploring show last night where they were looking at the wreckage of planes underneath the ocean and I physically had to turn my body away. I'm brave. I'm brave. I'm brave. The introduction of the Titanic was the movie when I was younger. I watched it with my sister. She made me cover my eyes at the booby scene. But you know, I was going like this. All that spiel aside, our goal for this video. I am going to attempt to make two count them, of Rose's dresses because I hate myself. So I already had this plan in my cosplay list that is never ending, doing some research. Doing some research, I realized that the Titanic Museum was in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Savannah and I already had plans to go to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee for Dollywood. And so I thought, I would combine the two. Now that trip is in just about one work week. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Let's go over which dresses and the design. All right, buckaroos, first up, I'm going to make her striped boarding dress, which is kind of our introduction to Rose, and I have always been obsessed with this outfit. It has had a choke hold on me for at least 20 years. And then the swim dress, also known as the sinking dress. I've always thought this dress was so light and ethereal. And yes, pastel. You cannot say there isn't character development on this channel. So we've got the dresses, let's talk about the old to-do. The breakdown of this video will be as follows. Actually make the dresses, kind of important. The makeup transformation. And finally, the reveal, which will involve flying down to Tennessee and filming at the Titanic Museum. And then as always, a little wrap up at the end to talk about what went well, what didn't go so well. So, my friends, I feel a bit Peter Pan in this pose. All right. I'm incredibly nervous that I'm not gonna be able to finish this on time, but I'm also incredibly hopeful at the same time, and excited, and anxious, and intimidated, and overwhelmed, and eager. With that flurry of emotions, let's get started. Let's get right into it. I have purchased some fabrics, and I will say one of my favorite parts about replicating an existing costume is the hunt. The thought of the extra pressure to get something completely accurate makes my armpits a little clammy, but <laughs> thoroughly enjoy looking at a reference photo and then trying to find fabrics that match that. I guess you could call me. I filmed this a little while ago and I genuinely don't remember what joke I was gonna put here. I made a big ol' order from Mood Fabrics. For the striped sporting dress, I got, it's a bit more see-through than I initially had wanted it, but I had the hardest time trying to find striped fabric that was also thick suiting material. I think we can make it work. This was quite spincy, so. And then for the swim dress, pastels. Pretty lilac, pink, and then I got a white, deeper purple which looks very deep and dank. The swim dress I feel like was pretty hard to hunt for because it looks different in every single screenshot that I saw. You know, I'm just gonna wing it and I'm gonna kind of do my own variation of it. You know, stuffing it back into its plastic prison haphazardly is probably the reason why everything I own is covered in wrinkles. Gently put it back. Careful now. Let me show you what I got for patterns. This simplicity pattern which they made years ago. It'll be a good base, and then I can add more layers and kind of futz with the colors and all that jazz. For the boarding suit, boop. Reproduction of a 1900 pattern, which I think is really, really gonna help, again, as a base. It's better than just draping the entire pattern myself. Let's put it that way. There are the two patterns. There are all the fabrics. I think we just need to start. Are you ready? Let's freaking do it. 
Assuming the position of floor troll and the facial expression of someone who really loves cutting out patterns so much. I got to work cutting out this bohemoth. Ah. I'll be honest with you, uh, I am deeming this unimportant because this little scoundrel decided that even after all of that work cutting out the pattern, she was gonna draft her own. Haha, <laughs> classic me. I don't often draft my own patterns, but I called upon my woman at knowledge and just draped some fabric, which was a bit tricky because this is supposed to be a pencil skirt, but I just did my best trying to mimic that swoop that the boarding dress has. This is also, in the end, the only part of this self-drafted pattern that I used for the skirt. Eventually, I did end up ordering a maxi pencil skirt pattern just to help with this, but, you know, we, we live and we learn. Speaking of completely changing my noggin about patterns, I bought this for the suit jacket because it had very, very similar seams and would allow me to alternate stripe patterns easily. But because Rose's suit kind of hangs over and then folds back, I had to add a little bit to this pattern piece. After feeling like a real live seamstress, I called it quits for the day and moved on. Boy, I hope you like voiceover, Rachel, because you're stuck with her for a little bit. I'll have you know that after years of my self-proclaimed title of Rachel No Mockups Maxi, I have changed my ways. It was important for me to do a mock-up because number one, the fabric is expensive, and number two, I had to lengthen the jacket pattern. And I wasn't too sure how that was gonna turn out, so. <laughs> and now a sleepy nugget break. Sleepy nugget break! Trying on the mock-up of the skirt was pretty much exactly when I decided that I needed to follow an actual pattern for this. I put the sleeves on, so this is what it kind of looks like so far. Goes from 80s businesswoman to, hopefully, a tragically bored rich lady. I am so excited with how this pattern is working so far. The skirt, as you saw, definitely needs a little bit more guidance. <laughs> up in the air and on pause for a little bit because I need to wait until that pattern comes in. Hold please. Kinda sorta look like this. Strong emphasis on kinda sorta. It looks like this needs to come over even more. But yeah, that doesn't come in for a couple days, so. Ow. Ha. Yoink. A little free willy moment. Me at the river Good progress for today. Let's continue. <laughs> The thrift store was kind of a bust, except for the best $8 I've ever spent in my entire life. Huh? Now that my soul-sucking errands are done. Fabric store, I got just a white satiny material for the lining. I grabbed this pink satin, more of like a pink lilac, I guess. Belt and the bow. For the base of the swim dress, I grabbed this light purple. It was between this or a white. And to be honest, I'm not actually sure what her base layer is. I think it might be white. All the reference photos being a little bit confusing to my gelatinous brain. I am going to start cutting out the pattern pieces for the suit jacket portion. <sighs> Let's do it. Much like me in any conversation about sports, my camera decided it did not want to participate. After bending it back to my will, I layered up the thin stripe fabric and the lining fabric and just started cutting out my pieces, making sure I'm aligning that arrow with the stripes. I lengthened all the other pieces just like I did for my mock-up and got to chopping. Both the back piece and the two front pieces have alternating stripes, so I just lined it up separately. After allowing 
myself a bit of a victory screech for this actually working. I called it quits for the day. Okay, are thou ready to respectfully kick this project's ass out of sheer determination and necessity because we're running out of time. I added sleeves. Now it's looking like an actual piece of clothing, which is crazy. And so if we try it on, this fit isn't gonna be exact. So I am going to have an Edwardian styled corset. It should give me an idea anyways. I pressed my seams. Tell me you're proud of me. This is it so far. I am going to switch over to the swim dress because I have not started on that and I probably should. I'm gonna start on the base skirt and then see what we can just chip away at because there's a lot of layers. There's gonna be a lot of cutting out of things. <laughs> a lot. Which, if you know me, is not my favorite thing. It's not even my 34th favorite thing. I'm actually having a lot of fun. I know, <laughs> I know. I think when it comes to making something that I've admired for so long, I feel like I enjoy the steps of the process more. I don't know, I'm just having a good time. I started on all of the outer layers. Let me tell you right now, I don't think I've ever sewn as much in my life as I did this week. I did end up modifying it a little and adding a bit more of a train than what was provided. Sometimes in the midst of a sewing project, you need a good plunk. Just me drowning in a sea of pastel. After my plunking, I started work on the bodice sleeves. <gasps> Continuing my sewing marathon, I started working on the under bodice as well. And because this project essentially destroyed my kneecaps, I was forced to go Gollum mode. It's not often a project makes me go absolutely feral, but this was one. It's been 84 years. <laughs> I'm done with sewing for today. Okay. <laughs> my good friends, I still have yet to do all the hemming on these 74 overskirts. <laughs> I'm calling it done for today. Let's take a gander, shall we? So, as you can see, she's looking like a pastel birthday party princess right now. Sort of offends my eyeballs, but I know it's for the greater good. Very good progress for today. All of the overskirts, it's looking a little too purple. If you look at her reference images, hard to tell, but it looks like the skirt itself has a little bit more thick of a white layer. So we'll see how I'm feeling. <laughs> what I have yet to do on this, the white lacy layer, I believe two bands of color Color, and then two bands of color in the sash. So yeah, I lost my damn mind today. Okay, I'm gonna go ice my kneecaps or something because they screaming. Do it. Oh hi. I did some work yesterday. Essentially, I did a ton of work on the skirt of the boarding dress. To do this, I used the pattern for that pencil maxi skirt. <laughs> maxi skirt. Pretty much just followed the instructions for that, doing the same thing I did for the top, which was layering that white layer underneath the stripe layer, because I don't want anyone seeing my kneecaps or ankles. The scandal! So I used all the pattern pieces except for the front cut into that scoop that I had done for my mock-up. The result... Here she is! Underneath these layers too, I put just a panel of striped fabric that was facing the other way because it's like a curved hem. Doing a little flippity doodah here, which I'm not crazy about. I'm quite happy with it though. So what I need to do today, work on this. I need to hem everything, get the collar all situated, start on like the little belts, and that's just for this. If we scooch over, 
this baby. Yesterday I went to the thrift store and I grabbed a white curtain. I really wasn't happy with the sheerness of the white layer that I had. So I like it a lot better. I think it matches the photos a little bit better. I also did grab this shirt right here. Basically, I needed the lace here with another white layer. And then I need to figure out the 5,000 belts. <sighs> Purple velvet that I ordered online because apparently it's impossible to find in thrift stores and fabric stores. Eggplant aubergine. The belts and the collar. Please send chaotic energy my way. I wish I could explain to you how I did this collar, but to be honest, I think I frankly blacked out. It was so confusing, but eventually I kind of just threw fabric around and it worked. I haven't really done many collars. It looks pretty cool. Oh, sophisticated lady. Now we need to do the facings on this side so that when they flip over, it's the correct striping and then add the velvet to that. Let's do it. Now, because my front sections were a little bit different from the pattern, I ended up having to make my own facings. Again, kind of just slopping things together and hoping that it would work. As you can tell by my really confident face, I also would be a big ol' fibber if I claimed responsibility for how the direction of these stripes turned out perfectly. This was a happy accident and way above my brain range. From there, I made a little makeshift pattern piece for the velvet accents, cut them out a wee bit larger than I needed so that I could fold them over and sew them onto the dress directly. I'll have you know, I've been doing really good about pressing my seams and finishing my seams. You know, I don't know, man. Between that, working on a pastel project. Who am I? This agent of chaos has turned a new leaf. Maybe not new leaf, maybe like, has turned an autumn leaf because it only happens once in a while. Also a PSA, stretch velvet is the devil. For the belt, I measured how much I would need, folded the fabric over and cut out a strip. Proved determination despite many distractions. sewed along the edge and turned it inside out. And then eventually I did hand sew that on as well. As the hours waned and our deadline creeped closer and closer, I made the top little modesty panel for the swim dress. Reassembled all of those layers and cried the song of my people. Good enough. Okay, so we're gonna attempt to do some dyeing, which is not something that I do often and or are very good at. She has a bunch of different colors in her ribbon sashes. And so the plan, that's gonna stay that pink color. This is gonna be a deeper pink, light purple, purpley blue. Some synthetic dye as well as normal. Cause I couldn't tell you if this was synthetic or not. And that's on having little to no knowledge about uh, most things. <laughs> After the first colorful tubby, I continued with the light purple, the blue, which started to look like a very miniature Titanic seascape. After they were all dyed to my liking, I had the hardest time trying to figure out how to attach these to the dress without them being super, super bulky. In the end, again, I just kind of threw things around and it, it kind of worked. After that, it was the final countdown. And time to do the hat. I found this giant sun hat online and I figured it would do quite nicely. But it was time to dye it in the most professional way possible. This dried a bit too dark, so I did end up going and adding a little bit of white to that purple acrylic, and it worked a lot better. Wait. 
would it be a cosplay project if you weren't working on it up until the very last second? In the airport as well as enlisting Savannah's help for putting together the fabric that goes on the hat. During which I had a very runny nose so we came up with the only viable solution. <laughs> It looks like, like a Teletubby got murdered. <laughs> <laughs> With the stressful final details being done, it's time for the transformation. Let us get started. I hope you and voiceover Rachel have become quite acquainted at this point, because here we go. Normally for my cosplays, I usually have to wear a wig cap, but thankfully I was able to skip that for this. Now for the very counterproductive part of taking off my makeup, only to put my makeup back on again. Sports stripes for intimidation. <sighs> then I like to do kind of a base layer of contouring. So I'm using this new palette that I got because it has really good grays and light browns. Using this photo as a reference because it's really hard to find a good HD photo of her face apparently. For the eyebrows, I am sketching out a general shape. Looking like utter garbo, but don't worry, we're gonna fix it with fake brush strokes that look like eyebrow hairs. And I'm just going in and following my reference images. First with brown and then going in with black. And then her horrible eyeliner. <laughs> For the lips, I usually use a lip liner to draw out the shape first, but I don't remember where my lip liner is, so I'm just going ham, going cold turkey, going little pepperoni slices that come in Lunchables. Then adding a little bit more of a cranberry color to both the lips and the cheeks, because apparently they just slapped rouge on her face for this movie, and I can get down with that. With the final adjustments aside, I'm still missing one thing, and that is contacts. And with that, we are done. Let's go. Well, kids, to freaking duh. It always feels a bit surreal at the end of very intense projects that take so much of my time that they're done. But alas, these dresses are freaking done. <laughs> I am chuffed. That being said, what would a wrap up be if it wouldn't be for dissecting these costumes and figuring out what went well, what didn't go well? Overall, I'm really happy with both dresses. This dress in particular, it almost didn't fit. I really had to cinch into this baby, so close call but it fits. Let's start with the striped dress. I've wanted to make this dress for as long as I can remember. I think that was probably my favorite part of this project was Frankensteining that to kind of make my own pattern. I'm really, really happy with how the striped dress came out. The back, I didn't have time to embellish with buttons. There's just a couple things here and there that I would like to more or less add to it to enhance it rather than change anything. I don't know why I'm holding it like this, like it's a little treat. And then the swim dress, I am also very, very excited about. I did my best to color match. I think I did pretty <laughs> okay. The back bow needs to be a little bit girthier. Maybe bringing this white layer up a tiny bit. I am really, really happy with these sashes. I don't have a lot of experience dyeing things, so I was having a lot of fun trying to make this little gradient. And like I said, it's really, oh God. 
there's a train there. <laughs> It's really comfy, it's it's snug. This corset is really doing doing the Lord's work. I had so much fun at the Titanic Museum. Everyone there was so, so lovely. <laughs> it is just mind boggling and sobering to think about what happened that night. It is one of my very morbid curiosities. That is in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. You all should go to it. There's also some sick mini golf located like right down the street. Proof of that here is me being a guardian of the hole. Also, I just want to give a huge, huge thank you to Savannah for helping me film the reveal. She's a champ. I love her. Gosh, I hope you enjoyed this journey. It felt like six months, but I can't believe it was only a week. Cannot believe it's already the end of the year. Holy crap. If you want uh, extras and bonuses, patreon.com slash rachelmaxi. $5 a month. We do live streams, behind the scenes, makeup transformations. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every other Friday and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. I do not have a mirror in here, so I'm using my camera. Pardon my floofing. I look like a frazzled arcane professor. Perfect. <laughs> oh, woof. I. <laughs> my beautiful face. My beautiful face. A beautiful artist at work. I am a beautiful artist. <laughs>